Good afternoon. It is March 16th, and this is Conversations from Stritch. I am Christopher Sent, Provost of Lewis University. President Livingston is out today. Last week was uh, spring break, and this is the first week of the second eight-week term of the semester, so we are past the halfway point of the semester. I hope uh, you had some rest and respite last week, and my Best wishes in the weeks, weeks to come to all of our community, our students, faculty, and staff. And I know that it does not feel like spring today. Um, it's cold and rainy here uh, on the Romeoville campus, and, and we know that that will turn soon. I have faith that that will happen. Um, I want to start with some, some sad news uh, to recognize. Our university was recently notified of the unexpected death of Carl Roach, an adjunct faculty member in the English Studies Department. This valued educator shared his passion uh, for English and writing with students as he taught uh, first-year writing courses for um, the, the last 10 to 12 years here at the university, so made a very, very big impact um, on our community. The uh, university uh, community extends our, our deepest sympathy and consolation to the family and friends of uh, Professor Roach during this period of bereavement. Some members of our community may have noticed that our Welcome Center is temporarily closed for repairs. There was a, a, a plumbing uh, incident in the, in the Welcome Center last week and had a fairly uh, big impact on the, on the building and so that the Welcome Center will be closed to visitors uh, and to the lobby and, and the whole building will be closed uh, through for about probably about four to six weeks. Um, the, uh, most visitors will be asked to go to the lobby of the Learning Resources Center to be received by um, admissions professionals or, or others from the Advancement Office who will be welcoming guests to our campus during that time period. Um, thanks to everyone in Advancement and Enrollment Services who has had to adapt really quickly to new work conditions um, and, uh, to, and to new uh, work environment for in such an important part of our campus. Uh, for faculty and staff, please mark your calendars for the next uh, community event, which is next Thursday, March 23rd from 4 to 5.30 in the university dining room. Um, I believe it has, the, if, if based on the flyer, it suggests that it is spring uh, next week, a week from today, so I'm looking forward to that and also that I, in some small way, I believe it is related to the opening of baseball. So usually the decorations and the food reflect the theme. So that's, I don't know exactly what's on the menu, but I'm guessing it will be baseball related. Um, tonight is the fourth annual Flyer Red Dinner fundraising event to benefit Lewis Flyer Athletics. It's 23 teams and more than 450 student athletes who attend Lewis University program of the dinner includes honoring the inductees of the Hall of Fame class of 2023, and those inductees include Mariah Henley, who was a basketball player from the class of 16, uh, Michelle Vux Vusco, a softball player from the class of 13, Randy Russ, and Bobby Russ, a baseball alumni from 91 and 90, respectively, and uh, Dr. Ralph Miller, who is, will be awarded as the Lasallian of the Year at the event tonight. Looking forward to that. Um, a few news items. Uh, the Arbor Day Foundation has once again recognized Lewis University's Romeoville campus as a tree campus higher education honoree, which honors universities for promoting healthy trees and engaging students and staff in the spirit of conservation. Uh, Lewis achieved this honor based on five standards, uh, which include maintaining a tree advisory committee, developing a campus tree care plan, providing dedicated annual expenditures for its campus tree program, scheduling an Arbor Day observance, and holding a student service learning project involving trees. Anybody who's been on our campus and walked around at any time of the year knows it's an incredible place. Uh, it, the, the, the people involved in creating the, the, and the natural environment of the campus, and the trees are a huge part of that, um, have really, they, they do, have done it in a way where it's striking and beautiful and also we, I, I tend to take it for granted as somebody who walks around campus all the time. So it's, it's uh, so uh, nice to, that we get this recognition. So special congratulations and thank you to Dwight DeVries, our superintendent of grounds and everyone in our facil facilities and grounds staff who makes uh, this honor possible. 
Um, congratulations to Dr. Sue Klappa, who recently won an award for her work in social responsibility from the Global Health SIG during the American Physical Therapy Association Combined Sections meeting in San Diego on February 23rd through 25th. Um, Dr. Klappa is the program director of the physical therapy program. Um, she also presented her research with a poster called Individuals with Neurological Diagnoses Fighting for Inclusivity social emotional aspects of grit and QOL. Uh, Lewis University's second year occupational therapy students recently worked together with students from the education department to create lesson plans on handwriting. Occupational therapy students offered advice to education students on how occupational therapy can provide an important role in handwriting instruction through a multi-sensory learning approach. Education students provided insights to OT students on core standards and instructional design, and then following that collaboration and sharing ways to improve upon lesson planning in each discipline, OT students implemented the lesson plan at the Cathedral of St. Raymond Catholic School in Joliet, Joliet. The OT students provided educational handouts on the Handwriting Without Tears program and offered tips and ideas for how children could improve upon motor skills, process skills, and social interactional skills within handwriting activities. OT students engaged in uh, classrooms ranging from preschool through third grade. Um, following that uh, St. Raymond uh, school experience, the OT students uh, reflected on ways and strategies that, that programs like this could be provided to students across different types of educational programming by related school providers uh, within public education settings. I wanted to dwell on that a little bit um, and explain that in a little more depth than most of our, our news items because it, I find it really thrilling and I want to really congratulate the faculty and the students in, in both education and occupational therapy because it's something we um, talk about doing so much here as a LaSallean institution. Our, our um, mission is really to serve, uh, to serve children um, going back 300 years. Our mission is really to understand the problems and challenges of students in students and children in communities impacted by poverty and this um, we often talk about how many programs we have on campus including those two that's that are training professionals who work with children in education settings and it's so great to see um, uh, graduate students collaborating together on solving problems or, or dealing with some of the challenges that students have in our schools because they have to collaborate when they are professionals, when they're working in those jobs. And it so, uh, makes me so happy to hear that our, uh, they're practicing not only the skills that are go into that, that work around handwriting, but also the, the ability to talk to each other as professionals and learn from each other, in, in, which will be really beneficial in, when they are professionals in those fields. Okay, on February 15th, a team of Lewis University Writing Center mentors led by Writing Center Director Tom McNamara and Writing Center Assistant Director Jasmine Castillo presented their community outreach project at the International Writing Center Association Collaborative at the Conference on College Communication and Composition hosted at DePaul, uh, DePaul's uh, Chicago campus. Lewis University staff and student mentors participated in a roundtable discussion called Pedagogies, Partners, and Positionality, Revisiting Community Engagement in the Writing Center. This discussion, which included short presentations by Jen Finstrom of DePaul and Melissa Pavlich of North Park, examined the community outreach efforts of three writing centers and ways to better recognize and respond to the literacy goals of community partners. Uh, congratulations uh, to Dr. Jerry Kavoris, uh, the 100,000 Strong in the Americas Innovation Fund team at the Partners of Americas and the Bureau of Western Hemisphere Affairs of the United States Department of State recently awarded a $35,000 grant to a collaborative team from Lewis University, Universidad de La, de La Salle, and the University of Delaware. So PEF for Life, Soil, People, the Environment, and Food for Life is a project to develop solutions for addressing climate change and soil degradation in rural areas of Columbia. So undergraduate students from Lewis and graduate students from the University of Delaware will travel, travel to Universidad de La Salle in Columbia where they will learn about soil degradation in rural areas due to climate change and its detrimental effects on family farmers. This experience will enhance the student scientific inquiry 
technical skills, and cultural competencies as they collaborate in diverse settings to address this real-world problem for family farmers. In addition to environmental awareness, this project is set to empower family farmers with a viable option to sustainability, sustainably manage their soils by producing biocar with materials readily available to them. So again, thanks to project director, uh, directors, which who include Dr. Jerry Kavoris, chair and professor of biology, and Dr. Rosalina Gonzalez, professor of engineering at Universidad de La Salle. Um, tonight, another event tonight, um, uh, we're gonna talk about three or four of them before this uh, show is over. Um, learn about uh, reimagining the classroom, teaching, learning, and grandparenting in the age of climate crisis from writer, philosopher, and educator Theodore Richards at the eighth annual LaSallian Colloquium. Presentation will take place from 6.30 to 8 in Convocation Hall um, and also via Zoom. The colloquium is presented by the Institute for the Advancement of Catholic and LaSallian Education at Lewis University and is co-sponsored by the Well Spirituality Center. This presentation will discuss the importance of shaping ways of learning and teaching to separate inner crises such as loneliness, anxiety, and depression from outer crises such as climate change, injustice, and the uh, COVID pandemic. It will share insight into how a classroom is a metaphor for the world and shapes of students' lives. Richards is the founder of the Chicago Wisdom Project and the author of eight books. He has received numerous uh, literary awards, including three independent publisher awards and two Nautilus Book Awards. So excited about that happening tonight. Um, and then we have um, just quickly to share uh, a bunch of other events. This is such a busy time at any college university campus. Um, we have some in front of us. I, we have not describing all of the incredible things that are going on on campus, um, but here are some of them. Um, I have not said this yet, but tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so we have some events going on around that, um, including a, a St. Patrick's Day pop-up at the Student Lounge. Um, we continue our Lent celebrations in the Sancta Alberta uh, Hall for the Stations and Soup, which happens every Friday at lunch, um, and many other things. Uh, uh, baseball's host, baseball will be here on campus as well as men's lacrosse uh, competing over the weekend and men's volleyball hosts uh, McKendry uh, tomorrow night uh, as well in the Neil Carey Auditorium. Um, on Sunday night, uh, we will have an open mic night at the Studio Theater. Um, and then next week, you see some other things happening, including a presentation by Chief Sagadlo on um, violence prevention and Alice training, member uh, uh, meetings of several clubs on, uh, at the campus. And again, these are just a few that we've selected to share, but there are, please go to the calendar to see that there are many more things happening next week. Um, so there's a lot going on. Um, our women's bowling and is, is uh, traveling this week to go to Music City Classic in Smyrna, Tennessee. Men's and women's golf is competing at the Intercollegiate Invitational in Lexington, Kentucky, and men's and women, women's tennis competes at Roosevelt this weekend. And softball will travel to Maryville and McHendry. Um, so congratulations to all those student athletes who are um, uh, nearing the end of their seasons, in some cases, and in, in the case of baseball and softball, just getting started. So, uh, a lot, we have actually, the show hasn't actually been on for three weeks, I think, and so I had a lot to say there. <laughs> and I'm really excited um, now to welcome um, today's guests. Let me remind you before uh, welcoming our guests that if you would like to ask a question for me or for them, um, please use the askusatlewis.edu. Uh, email address that's at the bottom of the screen, and um, we will try to get the question into the conversation that we're having. And if you're watching on YouTube, please feel free to ask a question, and, and we can forward the question to whomever it's for, um, even after after the day is over. So I'm really um, pleased to to welcome um, two guests today. Uh, Simone Mensch is the, a professor of English and the recipient of an NEA. Uh, uh, grant and a poetry fellowship and the, from the Meyer Foundation for the Arts Award. Sorry, I mangled that a little bit. Um, she is the author of seven full-length books, including Lamp, Black, and Ash, and Wolf Centos from Saraband Books. Her most recent, The Under Hum, is co-written with Jackie K. White and is forthcoming from Black Lawrence Press in 2024. 
Um, Simone serves as the poetry editor for Tupelo Quarterly, poetry editor for Jack Leg Press, and the co-host of the HB Sunday reading series, at which I believe she also founded, and as the faculty advisor for the Jet, for Jet Fuel Review. Selena Tomas is a senior at uh, Lewis University majoring in English. She has a concentration in literature and language as well as in general writing. Selena is, writing, is a writing tutor at the Writing Center and the presidential advisor of Sigma Tau Delta and the managing editor of Jet Fuel Review. She's recently published two poems in the literary magazine, The Opal. So Selena, Simone, welcome to Conversations from Stretch. Thank so you. So glad to be here with you. Thanks for having us, Chris. Yeah, and congratulations on those poems I just uh, Thank you. announced you getting published. That must feel great. Yes, it was such an accomplishment. I was so excited when I found out. I immediately told Simone after I found out, actually. That's awesome. So, um, Simone, um, I'm going to start with you. A couple questions. So what, what, do you, what classes do you teach here? Before um, I answer that, I do feel I, I, on behalf of the English Studies Department, I just want to express my deepest um, sympathies to Carl Roach's family and friends and students. It was a devastating loss um, as he was a much loved teacher and colleague here at Lewis, um, and I feel the need to express that. Um, switching subjects in terms of what do I teach, I teach publishing practicum, which um, Selena is in, and that is a hands-on um, publishing class mm -hmm. which produces Jet Fuel. Mm -hmm. I do an internship with Jet Fuel, and then I teach film classes, typically introduction to film studies um, and the horror film, which is one of my favorite mm -hmm. um, classes to teach. And then I teach all of the creative writing courses, the intro, intermediate, and advanced. Hmm. That's a lot. That's a lot of different things. It is a lot of different <laughs> things. That's, that's great. So, um, and then how do you manage balancing all the things that I just talked about, like in terms of uh, publishing, you know, writing, essentially, and uh, all the work that goes into publishing and, and uh, being a part of the literary community? Well, there is no balance, <laughs> um, but on a serious note, I think I incorporate a lot of what I do in terms of my volunteer work and um, professional life in the classroom. And so in that way, um, even, you know, I try to express to my students when I'm having them write that I am often doing these writing exercises with them, that this isn't just for a class, this is a lifelong engagement, which mm -hmm. is the process of writing and or publishing. Mm -hmm and or film watching. Right, yeah. So. And I, I'm wondering if, I guess for either one of you to talk about a little bit about um, what it means to have like poetry at a, at a place like Lewis. Like is it, it's a, you know, people, you know, it's not uncommon for universities to offer uh, creative writing classes. Um, it's part, you know, it's one of our uh, major emphases in the, in the English major and um, and I'm wondering what, why people choose it and, you know, what, what it, how it fits into people's lives in other ways. I don't know, maybe since, yeah. you're ch since you've chosen it in some way, yeah. you can ask, answer that, Selena. Yeah, so for me, poetry is a way for me to not only express the thoughts that I can't necessarily verbalize sometimes. Uh -huh. It's easier for me to write them down. It's easier for me to express them through writing. But it's also a way for me to kind of share my life story with other people. Huh. And I get to connect with other people through poetry. I have established a lot of connections in the poetry field, um, whether it be through poetry readings or other mm. visits and everything, because I write poetry with them. We get to talk about the poetry we do. Um, one of the poems I just published um, is an imitation of a poet I know. Mm. And so I got to share that with her and we got mm. to connect over it a little bit with her. And she was very excited for me. And I was very excited that I got to help share her, her work a little bit as well. So it's just about, um, for poetry, it's about establishing connections, establishing friendships and relationships to me mm. and just kind of sharing our stories. Would you say that it's also true that it's a connection with the re people reading it as oh, well. You absolutely. Know, in terms of, absolutely. Yeah. Because a lot of readers can have different interpretations of your pieces that sometimes you didn't even realize. And so yeah. it's eye opening to kind of see what other people read in yeah. terms of what you write. Because you thought one thing, but they can think something else. And you think, wow, that's yeah. a really great idea. Yeah. 
Something that's changed, Simone, I think in maybe 20, 30 years, um, is the ability to get feedback in different media, I guess. You know, like my, you're um, trying to say this without aging us, but there was a time <laughs> when one might give, be alone a lot or have a fairly small community, like you described, Selena, a network of people that you would share your work with. Um, and then you would really get feedback in public, like at reading. Like you would get really rare, real feedback in with people in an audience with bot with like look feeling their body responses and all that kind of stuff. And now I feel like that is also still a huge part of this. But 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 also there's the digital world allows for so many different ways of sharing and, and having interaction about it. Is it? Do, am I right about that? Or yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think. Um, but I also think because there's such a deluge of information um, now available that it is important um, to fine tune your work and that's the beauty of the workshop before you disseminate it. Um, and so I do think that's the value, one of the many values of the workshop. And going back to what Selena said in terms of the value of poetry, I think we often think of poetry as a solitary act, um, but in fact, it is community driven sometimes. It can be collaborative. It can be all of those things. And I see a lot of students um, gain confidence and uh, because they gain verbal sophistication, there's a sense of poise and um, power that they're imbued with after taking a creative writing course. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's cool. I, I wanted to ask you about something um, connected to collaboration, which is, uh, I mentioned that book, and I know, and I know you've written a lot with um, Jackie White, who is a former member of the community here, um, a retired English professor. The, um, that is really rare. And so could you maybe talk a little bit about how you do it? And do you agree that it's rare? I mean, I know there's, an, that there's a whole anthology of, but featuring it, but it's, if you compare it to scientists or to other um, professional communities, like I was just describing earlier, where, it's, where collaboration is like baked into what they do, um, it seems more rare in poetry. I, I don't know if I agree with that. I think um, there's been a resurgence in collaboration. Um, you can even see it in um, best-selling novels, like um, Hillary Clinton wrote a, a great novel, I think it's called The Terror State, hmm. with Louise Penny. Yeah, I remember, yeah. Um, and so, and there's a book, um, The Warriors, which is about cats, um, that, uh, uh, that's young adult, I believe, and that's mm -hmm. written by four, a collaboration, a cohort of four people, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's across genres, and in terms of poetry, um, I was first introduced to it by the writers Denise Duhamel and Maureen Seaton, and they actually are blurbing our new book. They did a collaborative blurb. And this would have been in the 90s. They had a fabulous book called the Exquisite Politics. But there are quite a few books being written. And I guess to your question, I would say what's rare is that there's a hesitation to publish collaboration. But in terms of writing it, everyone I know is doing some sort of collaboration, whether it's with music, whether it's with art, or just the collaboration of editing. We're always annotating making notes in the margin, and that's its own form of collaboration. And then, of course, the collaboration between the reader and the writer, which right. Selena sure. pointed yeah, out absolutely. earlier. Yeah, so it's really the publishing that's the most. Right. But I think publishers yeah. are, are waking up mm -hmm. to um, creating a space for collaborations. Mm -hmm. And Black Lawrence, I have to give a shout out to them because they are quite um, good about publishing. A variety of collaborations. That's cool. I'm going to tell a story now okay. that I wasn't planning <laughs> on telling, but I feel like I should because um, I never thought about it before. Okay. And this is live, so this is what this is for. So, um, when I was in graduate school, I was the research assistant for actually three years for a woman named Sandra Gilbert. I don't know yes. if that name yes. rings a bell. Yes, she does. Okay, she's a poet and a very distinguished literary critic. 
probably, you know, one of the one of the founders of feminist or the second generation of feminist literary criticism. And she had a collaborator. Her name was Susan Gubar. Yeah. They wrote three classic books together. And I spent, I actually lived in a, like an in-law apartment in her house. And I heard, and I, I would hear them very high volume collaborating. <laughs> <laughs> when they were, and, and they would come together to write, they didn't live in the same town or anything, but they would come together to write these chapters of these class books that are now classic books in the field. And they, um, it was very, there was a lot of, no way, you can't, you know, that's <laughs> dumb, don't say that, you know, like, <laughs> why did you say that, what does that mean, you know, kind of thing. It was really beautiful to just be around them, you know, to, in that creative process and to watch how it can work. But anyway, it's cool. I think it's a really cool thing that yeah. you do. Thank you. Um, the, uh, Selena, tell us a little bit about, tell me a little bit about um, where you're from and, and how, did, how, did, how did you find Lewis? And, yeah. yeah. So. I moved around a lot during my childhood. Um, originally, I was from Chicago, okay. and then I moved to Plainfield, and then Manuka, and then Darien, and now Crest Hill. Okay. <laughs> so I've been all over the place. My parents are still in Darien, so I go there occasionally. Um, I chose Lewis when I was still living in Manuka. Okay. Um, I knew an alum who went to um, study business here. And he informed me that there was a wonderful English department. <laughs> and awesome. um, not only did I want to stay local because my mother was pregnant with my sibling, mm -hmm. um, my baby brother, who I love very much, okay. um, I wanted to stay local because I wanted to stay with him and watch him grow up. But I mm -hmm. also just kind of wanted to stay around my family a little bit mm -hmm. um, since it's just, it was just me and my mom for the longest time. Mm -hmm. So that's why I chose um, Lewis partially, but also just because I heard such great things about the department. And so I came to see it for myself before I did a high school visit and I fell in love. Nice. So um, I met um, the late brother Lawrence and uh, Therese Jones here um, yeah. when I came to visit. Oh, and so cool. they really convinced me to join. And so I did. That's great. And so that means you knew what, ma what you wanted to major in. And did you, were you a writer in high school and before? Yes, I okay. used to write poetry in high school as well. Okay. Um, I took a small break um, my freshman year until um, my sophomore year. I started writing some poetry again for a project, and it really inspired me to go on to the writing track because originally I was just literature, um, but now I'm a literature and writing. So, um, yeah, I've been writing since high school, and actually even since middle school, I've been writing either fiction pieces or poetry. Wonderful. Okay, so... Um, Selena, why don't you tell me about Jet Fuel Review? Yeah. What is it? Yeah, so Jet Fuel Review is a literary magazine. We, um, the group of Jet Fuel Review editors, we help we kind of read the submissions, we comment on them, and we have editorials in which we decide which poetry pieces, fiction pieces, crave nonfiction pieces best represent our journal. So we're just really trying to get the most, um, the most contemporary pieces out there that best suit our message of diversity. Mm -hmm. And so we are a very inclusive journal and we publish all kinds of people from all mm -hmm. kinds of different countries, different ages. Mm -hmm. um, we even have a high school student that we just published. Oh, wow. We have someone from last issue who was 80 years old who we published. So all kinds of people from different backgrounds, different educational backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds, um, all kinds of stuff. So let me back up a little bit. I'm thinking, you know, there are people watching who are, um, um, ha, thinking about coming to Lewis, you know, obviously members of the literary community of Lewis are probably watching for sure, and they, they, they understand this really well. But we might just maybe explain a little bit. I think sometimes when people hear that there's a, a especially an undergraduate literary journal, they think, oh, it's everyone who takes classes at Lewis is pu is published in this journal, which is a really cool thing that we do in other places on campus. But, but this is really about. Uh, people from all over the world, all over the country, in that incredible diverse array that you described, um, submit poetry to Jet Fuel Review, and then the student editors review it. So I'm sorry, I'm, summar I'm just <laughs> saying it out loud, summarizing it. So like how, many, um, like how many applications do we get, or submissions do we get? Right now we have um, 
about over 850 submissions. So and how do you manage that? <laughs> we have a lot of consultants, thankfully, who okay. help us too. So we have some alums. We have mm -hmm. Dr. Simone and Jackie White who help mm -hmm. read poetry. So they go through and they tell us whether or not we need to continue reading some certain pieces. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we go through and we can make those decisions as well based mm -hmm. on our knowledge. Um, but overall, we get almost 900 submissions each semester. And sometimes we even cap out where each month we can't accept Stop anymore. Yeah. Okay. And we don't just publish poetry. I mean, we do um, fiction, creative, nonfiction, art, and then hybrid pieces. Yeah, thank you. I misspoke about that, yeah. And so, um, and Selena encapsulated it pretty well. But we have a lot of alums like to come back because it really is a community. Um, and so we have three alums right now that um, attend, and then Dr. Um, White, who's Professor Emerita, is also a consultant and a reader. But we have series editors because obviously 900 submissions is too much, though I look at all of them. <laughs> um, but we do, we have poetry editors, um, we have prose editors, and as we continue to grow, we'll probably split the prose editors into creative nonfiction mm -hmm. and fiction. And then we have art and design editors. So each of those things that you're describing uh, prose, art, poetry, they each have their own submission pools yes. and different people looking at them. Though we're collaborative, uh -huh. so sometimes with art, um, you know, there's, I oversee it with Haley Leon, and Haley's great. She's been a volunteer for two years now. She's an aviation major, hmm. but she's got a great eye and is really invested in art and design. And so we'll bring up the images we're deciding upon to the whole class, and sometimes we'll vote so that everyone has a say. Mm -hmm. um, but there are specific people who lead and make the final decision. And then how does that work? How does the final, not only the final decisions, but the final ordering and the layout and all that kind of stuff work? <laughs> yeah, so we have, um, like tonight, we have editorials where we'll get together in our groups of like poetry and prose, and then we'll do art collectively at the end where we kind of talk about it. We talk about the pieces individually based on who said the most um, either yeses or maybes to, because we have a scale of yes, maybe, or no. And so if you said yes or maybe, I make a cheat sheet before each editorial, I'll put it on the cheat sheet. And so we'll kind of look through them individually, have a great conversation about them, mm -hmm. talk about some of the um, pros, some of the cons to it, whether or not it's strong enough compared to right. what we've tabled, what we've accepted. Yeah. And we just kind of spend a lot of time with each individual piece. And it's a very intimate conversation that we get to have. And mm -hmm. the editorials last a couple of hours. We get to have great food, great conversation. And it's just a really great community where we get to, um, it's not just one person above the other. We work together to make mm -hmm. these decisions. Great. And the, there's a misnomer there, it's not really a cheat sheet, <laughs> but it's a collation of all the work under discussion. Uh -huh. um, like so tracking that, document. Yeah, so that we yeah. can come together and mm -hmm. be as efficient as possible in the three-hour editorial meetings. Mm -hmm. So then it, and it's both digital and hard copy or print, right? Well, it's digital, um, and then I'll just show, these are our two last, uh -huh. um, Versions, we publish about 40 for students mm -hmm. and um, hire admin and when we conference, so mm -hmm. we have a few to give away. Yeah, but they're really, the hard copies are, are for students' portfolios, so uh -huh. they can take them onto the job market and show an artifact that they've created. Right. But it's it's a digital forum. But right. within that digital forum, so it's it's, we do, we provide two access points. Um, we have a website and it's laid out on the website, but we also create an ebook. Uh -huh. So depending on your reading right. um, yeah. preference, you can read it as a PDF yeah. um, or you can read it on the website. Great. And, and again, just to back up a little bit, the, and then there are hundreds of literary journals like this in being produced. They come and they go usually in different yes. uh, cycles. Um, I've been a part of several in my career. Um, and, and, and so they're, they're read by people from all over the country, all of, you know, especially now that it's much more accessible digitally. 
um, all over the world, uh, the communities that the writers come from, from the sort of general uh, group of people who read literature in, the, in, the, in America and, and beyond. Um, so it has an impact, you know, you know far beyond, you know, uh, our local community here. And then it has a public, I'm transitioning now to the kind of like, it's not, it, it's an object or a digital object. And it's also kind of like, a, like you said, a community of people who do things together, including promote um, other uh, literary artists and artists um, in our community. And I know we host some, or probably announce soon, um, some events that are coming up connected to Jet Fuel. Um, am I making sense? Is that, am I accurate in my <laughs> description? Or can you elaborate a little bit on what I'm trying to say? Yeah, well, um, we're connected. Um, so we often host a reading series um, in collaboration with Jet Fuel. So we have two readers coming next week, Felita Hicks and Jules Wood, and we will solicit them. Mm -hmm. um, I would say solicitations, though, only make up about 10% of our journal. Mm -hmm. So um, the majority um, of our submissions come from what writers call the slush pile. Mm -hmm. Um, but we do solicit a few, including our readers, because it's a way to showcase them at Lewis, showcase them in the journal, and then take them out to dinner for a professional meet and greet in which the students can interact with professionals in their field. And that's a really, I think, a wonderful yeah. experience. Maybe you want to talk about um, our guest writers and the dinners. Yeah, so we recently also had um, an alumni panel, too, where we have that as well on top of our guest speakers. Um, and so we have wonderful conversations with them. I know during the alumni panel, I spent about half an hour just talking with one of the alums because the conversation was just that wonderful. Um, but in the previous semesters, I had a professor, Carrie McGath, who taught an online class. And during one of the author reader readings, I finally got to meet her. Oh, cool. And so we see each other occasionally at events. Mm -hmm. We talk still. Um, mm -hmm. I send her my poetry occasionally. And we see each other all the time in the city. And so mm -hmm. it's just a great way to not only have professional conversations with people, but again, the whole making connections connections, things, building right. relationships. Right. Um, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to be able to meet professionals in my field because not only does it help me engage with them, but it helps yeah. me learn and kind of predict yeah. what I'm going to be getting yeah. into. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, I forgot to say, well, I skipped over something I really want to say out loud um, for people who are thinking about writing poetry and submitting it to journals. So. I, I don't think you told me how many pieces get published, but a lot fewer than 900, right? Yes. So um, some of those ones that are not getting published are probably really good, right? And so a huge part of being an artist in, in any context, in any culture, certainly our culture here, um, is getting rejected a lot. Um, so I don't know if you want to reflect on that a little bit, Simone, but I mostly just want to hear like students and people thinking about, um, you know, continuing. You reminded me of it when you said you're, you know, learning from meeting people from all different stages in their careers, that that is a very normal and common part of the experience. Yes. Um, <laughs> to normalize it for students, um, because I think it's really important to be able to set your ego aside. So two things happen. In the publishing practicum, we do not publish our own while they're editors. Mm -hmm. So that allows for them not to have yeah. their ego invested in that sense. So right. Selena, as managing editor, could not publish right now in Jet Fuel. Right. When she graduates and then has moved on and is no longer an editor, mm -hmm. then she can submit. Um, but I actually, um, and I just did this for my creative writing class, I pull up my submittable and I show them the ratio of my acceptances mm -hmm. and rejections. Mm -hmm. And so, and I always preface, like, look, I am a publishing professor. My seventh book will be out next semester, and I get rejected the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. Like, my acceptances are, you know, yeah. one to every ten rejections. Right. And I think that helps... Um, create a sense, or at least a few students have told me that it makes the rejection sting a little less mm -hmm. because they see that it's just part of the industry. Yeah, and we are many factors that don't have to do with 
quality yeah. that go into those decisions. And we yeah. talk a lot about that as well as editors. Sometimes, um, like right now, you know, we have so many pieces we've accepted and we have to curate more diligently towards the end because we don't have much space left. Um, and then sometimes things are right on the cusp, but maybe there's just one line that doesn't hit right. right. Sometimes we're tired mm -hmm. and we do have um, things to sort of counteract that, like we talk about this, like mm -hmm. to reread. If you're tired yeah. and you feel like you've checked out, then you set it aside and come back when you're fresh because we yeah, try to talk about how to honor our, our submitters in the best possible ways. Yeah. Um, but it is a lot um, and at the same time, rejection, we, in our rejection note, we even say, and this was a student devised um, general rejection, but we say, you know, as recipients of rejections mm -hmm. ourselves, mm -hmm. all of us, me yeah. included, mm -hmm. Dr. White, um, we know how disappointing it is mm -hmm. to get this. But sometimes it doesn't have to do with the quality at all. Yeah. And also, I think it's important to, you know, put quality in quotes because we decide things based on our lenses, yes. our experience, our aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And so because we don't choose something doesn't mean that it lacks quality, just maybe it doesn't yeah. speak to our lens or our experience. And I'm assuming based on my experience that it's also about you're creating a book. So sometimes yes. it just doesn't fit, fit. into yeah. the particular set of works that you're, you're putting together, even though it's great. Um, okay, so then we have an event coming up to launch the, 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 the newest? 25th issue. 20, yeah. That's kind of special. It is. What, um, what element or whatever that's called is that? The silver? Is that silver? I don't know. Somebody needs to write to the <laughs> Ask Us at Lewis study to you <laughs> who knows these things. I know. Um, <laughs> we'll have to give you a present for whatever, whatever that is, whatever element that is. Or, um, that's cool. So the, when is it? I think we have a, a, a visual. April 20th. There it is. Yes. And, and may I do a shout out of all my editors? Um, so Alyssa, Duvon, Harper, Alexandra, Selena, Sam, Haley, Lauren, and then the three consultants who are alums, Stephanie Karras, who's actually a grad student here in psychology, um, Andrea Yvette Rodriguez, who um, works at the library, and Patricia Damocles, who works in marketing for Dealer Inspire. Mm, wonderful. Thanks to everyone who is making it happen. What happens at the event? At the event, we like to, um, prior to the event, we ask some readers to participate in the event. Mm -hmm. um, we also send them a couple of selections that they get to choose from, whether mm -hmm. it be like poetry, creative nonfiction, or fiction. Um, we mm -hmm. try to align it best with their personalities, their interests, and so we give them a couple of selections to read. So and these so, are Lewis people? Yes. Yeah. So Lewis okay. faculty, Lewis students, mm -hmm. alums, um, anyone really. Yeah, that's um, cool. And, and so, across disciplines. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think that, speaking of yeah. association and collaboration, collaboration that's very important for us. Yeah. So we like to have people from theology, physics, chemistry. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I love that. So we have them read their selections and for about an hour or so we just kind of read and engage with poetry, fiction mm -hmm. pieces and just really listen to it because mm -hmm. it's one thing to read it, it's another thing to listen to someone else reading it. So Yeah, totally. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful event. And so I look forward to it. So um, any last words about poetry or about jet fuel that you want to share with people um, and, I, and then I have one more topic to bring up before we're done just to be clear yeah. <laughs> um, so I think jet fuel Roo is a great opportunity for anyone who would like to join it's amazing firsthand hands-on experience and mm -hmm. it teaches me so much about professionalism each and every day mm -hmm. so I really am grateful for Simone for teaching me these things because yeah. I am a much different person I'm a much different professional mm -hmm. thanks to her and her courses so um, if anyone wants to learn more about professionalism or just get hands-on experience jet fuel is a really great opportunity that's great 
Um, yes, we're always looking for editors, and again, I think it's really important to express that editors do not have to be English study majors. We've had um, my last um, managing editor, I always say my because they're my children, right? <laughs> um, but um, Ale um, Alexiana Castaneda was um, public health, mm -hmm. and then um, I've had other um, managing editors and series editors, like I said, aviation, criminal justice, mm -hmm. nursing. And so you don't have to be an English studies major. Mm -hmm. And I want to echo Selena's sentiment that in terms of professionalism and professional development, it really gives you a leg up in um, postgraduate mm -hmm. career search because I, every reference I've given to students, mm -hmm. um, people want to know how is their critical thinking? Mm -hmm. How are they at meeting deadlines? Are right. they good at collaboration? Are they good at collaborating with difficult personalities? Right. Communication. And can they communicate mm -hmm. both orally and mm -hmm. on the page? And these are the things that every interviewer um, has asked me when I've provided a reference yeah. or recommendation and I can answer all of those across the board. And I really think it's an important class because it is a practicum, because it extends outside of the class. Mm -hmm. And it allows people to sort of put, I never say the real world because we're always mm -hmm. in the real world, but the postgraduate world, right? Yeah. right? One, one foot in the classroom and sort of one foot in your career path. Absolutely. Thank you both so much, that's, that's really inspiring. Um, to hear you talk about it that way. Um, it is open to all majors, and you're an English major, yeah. right? So maybe talk a little bit about your experience as a senior, yeah. what that was like, and you know what some of your favorite classes were. And yeah, it's a little bit daunting thinking about uh, it. How <laughs> graduation is just uh -huh. a few short weeks away. Yeah. <laughs> um, but overall, I've had a wonderful experience in the English department. I've met, made so many great friends. I've established so many great relationships with my professors. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite classes are the ones that are the most challenging. Like my mm -hmm. advanced study was one of my favorite classes, yet it was very mm -hmm. difficult because mm -hmm. it's an advanced study. What so. did you study? What was what it, what was it focused on? It was focused on Gothic literature. Okay. So very. Um, kind of dark and gloomy stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, must, you like that, right? You of course that. I do, <laughs> but I did not teach this class. No, right, I know. <laughs> taught by um, Jamil Mustafa. Uh -huh. um, but overall, it's just a great community. We do all kinds of events. Like earlier in the year, um, last year, we had a welcome back picnic where we had all kinds of like burgers and hot dogs and everything. We were just kind of getting back together after a summer. Mm -hmm. And then every Friday, we host a social tea where we just get together and talk. We drink tea. We mm -hmm. just enjoy each other's presence. And so it's just a really great community where I'm so happy to be a part of it because everyone's so connected all the time and we really care for each other. That's so. awesome. And so, Mom, can you remind me what the uh, different emphases are that you can focus on in the major? So you can do the writing track, which I direct. Uh -huh. um, that's creative and professional. And then you can do English language and arts um, that's teaching and then language and literature. And, um, I, you know, I, I like, I feel like there's symbiosis between the three tracks. Sure. I'd like yeah. to see even more yeah. because especially, I mean, Selena is a lit person, but also a writer. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important to sort of see the architectural makeup of literature from the outside in, mm -hmm. say in a lit course, but also from the inside out from a creative writing course. Right. So that you're both reading it, critically thinking about it, and then analyzing it, and then mm -hmm. reacting, responding with your own um, mm -hmm. original literary response. Yeah, that's great. All right, well, our time is up, unfortunately. <laughs> I have a million other things I'd like to talk about. Um, so thank you both so much for being with me and for um, being here today and taking time out of your very busy schedules to do it. Thank you. So. This was a delight. And you're right. Good. It went by like that. I could <laughs> I keep know. talking. <laughs> I know. It's um, too bad. Yes. But sign up for Jet Fuel. I'd also like to say we're very inclusive and we just have such a lovely community. It's very clear. And uh, I really appreciate that. Um, so thank you, everyone. Um, uh, bless you and your families and have a wonderful week and we will be back uh, next week. Take care.